Donald Trump wants the U.S. to expand its nuclear arsenal. Critics say the U.S. and Russia already have more than enough warheads to deter any nuclear attack. So what's behind the president's latest thinking, and could it provoke a new global arms race? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hazem Seeker. President Donald Trump has reiterated his desire for the United States to be what he calls top of the pack when it comes to nuclear weapons. His latest comments echo a tweet sent following his election win, which promised to boost U.S. firepower. In an off-camera interview at the White House, Trump said he would ideally like to see a world with no nuclear weapons. But he's concerned that America has, in his words, fallen behind on nuclear weapon capacity. His spokesman said Trump means what he says. What he was very clear on is that the United States will not yield its, its supremacy in this area to anybody. Uh, that, that's what he made very clear in there. And then if other countries um, have nuclear capabilities, it will always be the United States that has the supreme um, co supremacy and commitment to this. Obviously, that's not what we're seeking to do. Uh, the question that was asked was about other people uh, growing their stockpiles. And I think what he has been clear on is that our goal is to make sure that we maintain America's dominance around the world and that um, w if other countries flout it, we don't sit back and allow them to grow theirs. Well, during his election campaign, Trump referred to nuclear proliferation as the single biggest problem facing the world. Of the nine nuclear powers in the world, Russia has the most warheads, with the U.S. a close second. And a deal called the New START Treaty allows both countries to keep check on each other's nuclear capabilities. The treaty is activated next February. None of the other nuclear powers come close. It is estimated that they only have around 10 percent of the world's nuclear warheads. Most of these countries have signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. India, Pakistan and Israel are the exceptions, and North Korea withdrew its support from the NPT in 2003. Let's bring in our guests now to talk more about this from Washington, D.C. We have Barry Pavel. He is the director of the Brent Scowcroft Center on International Security at the Atlantic Council. He's also a former National Security Council advisor to Presidents Obama and Bush. In Moscow, we have Pavel Felgenhauer, who is a Russian security and defense analyst. And finally, Christian Ruger. He is an arms control expert and the head of policy with the humanitarian disarmament Norwegian People's Aid. Good to have you all with us, uh, gentlemen. Barry Pavel, if I could start with you. Now, uh, Trump has been criticized by uh, uh, Democrats in particular who say he has been too friendly uh, towards Russia at this point, particularly the uh, Russian uh, president. Could this be seen perhaps as as Trump uh, trying to uh, address that and, and be seen to be tough on, Rus on Russia because of those accusations? I mean, it, it certainly could be part of sort of the pre, you know, the, the, the posturing before there is a decision on a realigned bilateral relationship, at least from the U.S. side. So this could be part of that. I also, though, think um, that part of the deal in Washington but among the, the executive and, leg and legislative branch for New START was that there would be a significant amount of um, resources devoted to the qualitative modernization of the U.S. nuclear arsenal, which is rather aging if you look at most of the legs. There are some plans to modernize those capabilities and all of the legs. And I think that's where there might be some concern. I'm not as concerned about quantitative at this point, um, although uh, there is a worry that by the deadline next February, uh, the number of my understanding is the number of um, Russian warheads would are still a few hundred over the New Start limits. So if that does not happen, and if their INF treaty violation continues, then New Start is in trouble in about a year. Pavel Felgenhauer, how's Russia likely to interpret this? Uh, well, it has been already interpreted, at least in the Russian Parliament, 
that this is a very bad move uh, that uh, Donald Trump is putting into jeopardy the underlying principle of arms control, of nuclear arms control, the principle of a parity between the United States and Russia uh, since times of uh, uh, Richard Nixon and Leonid Brezhnev in the early 70s. Parity was the base. And now Trump is saying that America wants to be ahead. And that's seen as rather very, this is rather disturbing. Uh, though it's of course understood that right now immediately nothing most likely physically won't happen much. Christian Ruger, do you see this, this talk of, of ramping up the America's nuclear arsenal? Do you fear that this will lead to another arms race? Well, I'm definitely concerned about it. I think that the main problem in the world today is not uh, too few nuclear weapons, but far too many. Uh, and uh, that this goes in the entirely wrong direction when it comes to increasing security in the world. Pavel, Barry Pavel, if, if I could turn back to you then. What should we read into this as well, given um, how fluid President Trump's, have, uh, President Trump's positions have been in the past on, on a number of other issues? Well, I, I would make two points. I mean, number one, um, this could be, as I said, to reiterate, you know, the, some, some uh, public uh, posturing regarding um, how the Trump administration ultimately plans to approach Russia, what's the combination of cooperative initiatives plus uh, agreement to disagree in other areas. But I would reiterate that there, the United States government under the Trump administration is not yet staffed. There are no deputy secretaries of the major national security departments. There are no undersecretaries. They, they are just beginning the, the relevant policy review here, which is the nuclear posture review. Um, and so I think we need to have a little, um, we need to give them a little breathing room. I mean, obviously, if the president says something, we, we should all react and have this kind of discussion. But I think things won't come into serious policy statements until people are in place and the reviews are completion are completed or near completed. Pavel Felgenhauer, how much stock does Russia put into to what Trump says now? Just not just about uh, the, the nuclear issue, but just in general. I mean, we've heard that the Russian media in the last few days uh, uh, hasn't been giving him much coverage in contrast to the first couple of weeks of, of his administration. Is it you get the sense that Moscow is kind of cooling to Trump a little bit now? Mm, well, to some extent on the public part of it, most likely. Uh, but it's also recognized that Trump actually wants to kind of uh, go for some kind of deal with Moscow. Uh, but what kind of deal is not fully clear. Actually, in this statement uh, about the nuclear weapons, Trump said that he's going to have, that this was a bad treaty, the new start. Uh, but he wants to make a new deal. So most likely the uh, declaration that the United States is going to increase its nuclear arsenal is a more a bargaining chip, that it's uh, uh, raising stakes before going into some kind of grand deal with Moscow. So of course Russia is going to, Moscow is going to be watching what's going to happen. Right now both sides, they're tied by the New START Treaty. It's not, I don't think that anyone really wants to uh, negate the treaty just right now. That's rather out of the question. So there's going to be bargaining. There's going to be very tough bargaining. Uh, but it's not yet going into the domain of a kind of uh, free-for-all uh, nuclear arms race. Uh, Christian Ruger, when President Trump says he wants to be top of the pack uh, on, on nuclear weapons, um, the, the thinking is that this, this would put the United States in a better negotiating position to uh, eventually uh, reduce the arsenal of nuclear weapons, because he has also said that he, wants, that he prefers a world without nuclear weapons. What do you say to that? Well, uh, I think, first of all, it's important to, to acknowledge that this is not a new problem that has come up with this, with this present administration. This is part of the whole logic uh, ar around nuclear weapons, that uh, there is a, there is the nuclear weapon states are saying that in order to uh, get rid of these weapons, we need to have uh, more weapons or newer weapons or better weapons and invest in them rather than just get rid of them. And I think this is actually the core of the problem. 
And uh, it's interesting to note that while this ha happening now uh, in the US and uh, with, with the other nuclear state, uh, Russia, some hundred states are meeting in a couple of weeks' time uh, to start negotiations for a ban on nuclear weapons, which is what we really need, because the core problem is that nuclear weapons are not uh, banned. They are legal. Barry Pavel, you talked earlier about the, the, the staffing issue in, in the White House right now, the fact that a lot of positions haven't been um, filled. Do you get the impression as well that um, the, the, the Trump administration is not really speaking with one, with one voice on, on this and a number of other issues? Because we've heard uh, different things from his vice president uh, and other members of his cabinet on everything uh, from NATO to Europe to Israel and, and, and so on. Do you think that that is hampering uh, their, their ability to, to, to do their jobs right now? Yeah, I would make a, I would make a few points. I mean, it, it's not just staffing in the White House. It's, it's major senior official positions in the Defense Department, in the State Department, um, and in other relevant uh, national security positions. So that's number one. Number two, I think there is a little bit of, you know, message indiscipline in particular among the president and some of his senior cabinet officials. Number three, I think we've seen an evolution of the president's own rhetoric on a number of issues that has moved in general toward the mainstream. We just heard in the same interview, uh, but with Reuters, that he supports the European Union. And before that, uh, I, I think we had heard um, rhetoric to the contrary. Same with NATO um, and same with some other issues. So I think there is, you know, perhaps with the with the continuing policy discussions between him and his senior advisors perhaps there is some movement i still though would not um, expect you know stability and smoothness in terms of and continuity with obama administration positions i think the trump administration has an agenda that agenda includes significant changes in a core assumptions on national security that may include nuclear weapons and on other issues and they fully intend to uh, execute uh, those types of changes where they see it as in U.S. national interest. Uh, Christian Ruger, what do, you, what do you say to this argument that, um, uh, that nuclear weapons has actually uh, acted as a, as a deterrent uh, to war because it has prevented many of the great powers uh, going to war and, and, and that this has been apparent for, for, for decades now? What, what do you say to that argument? Well, I mean... First of all, I mean, there's a question of whether there has been peace in the world in, in the age of nuclear weapons, that I think there's a number of people living in, in war affected countries that would say to the contrary. Uh, and I think it's important also to say that this is not a number game. Uh, these are weapons that have the capacity to destroy whole cities and communities and uh, produce immense human and humanitarian suffering. And we need to get away from this logic that somehow our security is protected by weapons that can destroy uh, our existence. Pavel Felgenhauer, um, do you fear, I mean, I, I know I asked this question earlier to Christian Ruger, but what, what's the feeling in Russia uh, on this idea that uh, talk of increasing uh, nuclear arsenals will, will lead to a, a further nuclear arms race? Well, uh, arms race of sorts is already happening, but it's sort of one-sided because Russia has been in the midst right now of a very massive uh, nuclear rearmament. Uh, these programs began, some of them in Soviet times, continued during the 90s, but with uh, President Vladimir Putin, they were accelerated, and now we are uh, producing or on the verge of producing a new generation of delivery systems, land-based, sea-based, uh, land mobile-based. And while the United States has basically relied on the same delivery systems that were in existence when the Cold War ended. So that's, uh, Russia has been rearming. Russian president has been actually boasting that we have the new weapons while the Americans have the old weapons. Maybe that rhetoric has sunk in with the new White House that decided that, okay, now we're also going to go for nuclear weapons. Of course, the thing is that the United States uh, has plans on the drawing board of a new nuclear submarine, maybe a new strategic bomber, but these are designed to appear somewhere after the year 30 or maybe even 40.
So right now, the United States is not in a position to begin a major modernization, or at least go into deployment. What they could do, they could so-called upload, because under the New START, a lot of the decrease in American warheads was downloading of it from existing delivery systems, but they can be relatively easily uploaded. That will not increase, in, increase security, but that can be used in negotiations on a kind of a deal that maybe would involve Ukraine, maybe Syria. I mean, most likely Trump is thinking of a big deal with Russia, and nuclear weapons are part of the bargaining chips, which is a bit scary because these are very scary weapons, using them just as bargaining chips. Uh, Barry Pavel, what's your view on that? I mean, uh, uh, President Trump is a man who, who, who says he likes to make deals. Could, could uh, the nuclear issue be part of a, uh, a bigger deal with Russia? I mean, one never knows, so that is certainly a conceptual possibility. If, if anyone uh, is sort of acquainted with the current atmosphere in Washington regarding U.S.-Russia relations, I think even President Tr Trump is somewhat hemmed in in terms of big deals, um, grand bargains with Russia, in particular over the heads of countries like, the Ukraine, like Ukraine, which was invaded by Russian forces and is continuing to be destabilized by Russian forces. I want to really though, just reiterate one point, and that is by the February 2018 deadline for New Start, if either of two things is, uh, continues to happen, then New Start is in trouble. And that those two things are the continuing Russian INF treaty violation with its new nuclear cruise missile, and number two, the uh, number of warheads that are allowed under the treaty, 1,550. Russia currently is a few hundred above that still. If they don't bring those down, New START is in trouble, and then the types of things you heard Dr. Felgengauer talk about might start happening because the U.S. Congress would then work with the administration and there would be some types of measures to deal with uh, the, the deterioration of abiding by the New START Treaty. Uh, Christian Ruger, um, I know you, you, you've said uh, earlier that this uh, increasing the uh, proliferation of, of nuclear weapons is, is not going to get us anywhere, but what, what uh, lessons do you uh, draw from, uh, from the past, from the Cold War era that uh, 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 point to that, you believe? I think that we uh, need to acknowledge that we need to break out of, of this Cold War logic that is now coming back to us at full force. Uh, the kind of discussions I, I hear with, from my colleagues here, I, we have heard this for a number of times, and, and the, the very you know correct inside the sort of the logic of, of nuclear weapons. But for the, all those states, all those people living outside nuclear weapon states, we are deeply concerned that this kind of negotiating uh, play is, can actually lead us down towards a, a situation where these weapons either are used or there is a, some kind of uh, accidental detonation happening that, that will have disastrous consequences and we need to get away from that. Uh, I think what we have seen over the past four or five decades has not led us anywhere closer to, uh, to global security when it comes to nuclear weapons, and we need to tackle this uh, from a different approach. So how do, you, how do you convince people of that argument? I mean, how do you can counter the, the opposite narrative which is out there, not, not just uh, from the, the U.S. president, but elsewhere uh, in the world, um, in the Middle East, perhaps, where there's a lot of uh, instability, uh, and there are calls for uh, uh, ramping up, not just uh, in, in, in the area of nuclear weapons, but in conventional weapons as well. I mean, first of all, I, I, I can absolutely not see how more nuclear weapons or better nuclear weapons would in any way enhance the security in the, in the Middle East today, rather to the, to the opposite. So uh, to me, these are not even sort of, they don't have the kind of military utility you can, you can talk about. The, these are weapons of mass destruction. Uh, and I think that the world has proven that they're able to deal with weapons of mass destruction. To, to others, chemical weapons and biological weapons have been banned because they are unacceptable. And I think it's time that we do this also now with uh, nuclear weapons. Barry Pavel, a lot of concern has been um, expressed not just in the United States, but in, in, in uh, Russia and elsewhere about uh, what North Korea is doing with these continued uh, nuclear tests, ballistic missile tests, 
there is a fear that at some point uh, it will have uh, some kind of nuclear weapons capability uh, and that we'll be, it will be able to strike at the mainland United States. Um, what, what, is, what does the Trump administration do in that scenario? What, what, what are the options? Well, I mean, you, you raise one of the most urgent and important national security priorities that's, that's being debated as we speak in Washington on a, on a daily basis. The trends are very unfavorable that if you look ahead five or ten years, the type of capability you suggest looks quite likely, unfortunately, and this is by someone who runs a regime that it does not appear to be the most stable and does not share our calculus, although I would not call them irrational. I think they're quite clever. But uh, that type of threat would present a very new security situation. And so uh, it, the status quo approaches over the last five to ten years, while I think they might have made sense a long time ago, they're not working. North Korea's nuclear weapons capabilities are accelerating very rapidly. And so I think uh, there is an ongoing policy review on this uh, very question right now. And I think you will see some discontinuous policies coming out of the United States. And you're already seeing in the rhetoric from President Trump, we really need China to start leaning much more heavily on North Korea using whatever influence it has, because this is headed in a very, very dangerous direction. I applaud you for raising it. I think it's the most near, it's the near term highest concern regarding the question of nuclear deterrence. Pavel Felgenhauer, what, what's your view on that? I mean, I, if there's one thing that Russia and the United States can agree on, it is that they don't want to see uh, North Korea have any kind of nuclear weapons capability. Well, basically, yes, Russia is against nuclear proliferation in any place, uh, though the North Korean nuclear potential is not seen from Moscow, at least by the Russian military, as really very threatening. They, there's a belief that it's aimed not at us, and so it's not really that much our problem. Uh, the Russia would, of course, and the Russian military would hate to see a real war breaking out in the Korean Peninsula, and especially if it ends in the total collapse of the North Korean regime and uh, South Korea and the Americans taking over. That would be seen as a disastrous. Uh, and of course, the use of nuclear weapon close to Russian territory could also be, I mean, there could be fallouts and whatnot. Uh, so, yes, it's a dangerous situation, but for the time being, Russia uh, scolding North Korea well, doesn't have that much influence direct on what Pyongyang is doing. And second, it's not seen as a direct, immediate threat to Russia. Uh, Christian Ruger, um, if, if uh, I mean, I know from your perspective, you, you feel that the Trump administration's um, position on this needs to be met with, with a clear uh, response from the international community. What, what do you think that response should, what form do you think that response should take? I think that response should be that we now need to uh, move away from this idea that uh, modernizing and, uh, and uh, increasing the, uh, the number of nuclear weapons is in, will in any way in, enhance security. And we need as soon as possible to get on the path of, of full nuclear disarmament and also as I've said earlier, we need to actually get the ban on these weapons of mass destruction, as, as other weapons of mass destruction uh, have been banned in the past. But who is, who, who is it uh, most incumbent upon to, to push that? Is, is it nations like the United States and Russia who have, ha have the biggest share of the nuclear arsenal? Well, of course, they have, they have a huge responsibility uh, towards the rest of the world with being, being the holders of these arsenals. But, but, and they should immediately, and again, under the Non-Proliferation Treaty, Article 6, they are uh, legally bound to start uh, nuclear disarmament uh, in an effective way, something they, they haven't really been doing, apart from these bilateral agreements of reducing uh, certain weapons categories. But I think also the, the rest of the world has a responsibility to step up and say that these weapons are unacceptable uh, and we need to find ways of get rid of them. We cannot wait for nuclear states to take the lead on this. All right, on that we're going to have to leave it. Uh, Barry Pavel, Pavel Felgenhauer and Christian Ruger, thanks very much for being on Inside Story. And thank you, as always, for watching. Remember, you can see this program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, 
You can go to our Facebook page, that's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle there is at AJ Inside Story. For me, Hazem Seeker and the whole team here, bye for now.